welcome to a lesson on Farmhand by James K. Baxter. So this poem is quite straightforward and it's kind of simplistic, but it's because the subject itself is quite simplistic, so it's kind of treating that subject with the type of style that it deserves. So there shouldn't be too much difficult language in here or anything that's too confusing for you ideas-wise. That doesn't mean you can't write a complex poem on it, so I'm going to go into the bits that I think are the more advanced things or the, the more kind of um, difficult things to deal with and try and explain those for you so that you know how to address them in an essay so that you get really top levels. Um, but yeah, hopefully you don't have too much trouble with this one. And I'll help you through it, obviously, as I always do. So the first thing I want you to do is have a look at the poem. So just pause me now and read it aloud. Um, I've put a link on this document, so if you're on the Scribbly, um, the Scribbly school page, you'll be able to have access to that document and download it. Maybe print it out if you need. But you should be able to kind of click the link there. If not, just quickly look up the poem or have a look in your anthology and then pause me and read it through once to yourself aloud. So now you've done that, if you haven't yet, definitely pause me now and do it, but I'm going to assume you've done it. So a couple of words, the only words really that I thought maybe might be a bit challenging. Farmhand is just someone who ha uh, kind of hands, hands out, no? What's a word? I can't think of the phrase now. Who? I don't know what the phrase is. I'm thinking of a phrase, but I can't quite remember it for some reason. Someone who um, gives a hand at a farm. Gives a hand? <laughs> it sounds wrong in my head. It doesn't sound like the right phrase. I don't know what's wrong with me. Someone who works on a farm, basically, as I've written here. So doing manual labour, basic, simple farm tasks. And um, to yarn means to tell stories, but yarn itself is another word for wool. So obviously that's a kind of farming um, kind of rural metaphor, it feels like something kind of countryside-y and village -y and so on, because we associate wool with um, nature in the countryside. And finally, stooks are um, the word that we give to collected bits of wheat or kind of bundles of um, farming produce. Usually it's wheat, so they, they gather it and kind of, it's like a stack of wheat basically, but it, it sort of sits upright so that the wheat itself is away from the ground and it's not going to rot or get wet or anything like that. So um, yeah, if my explanation isn't good for that one, just look up an image of a stook and it should, it, you should know what I'm on about. So the summary then of the story, because it's a single long stanza, I've just kind of given you a bit of a chunk of detail here, but basically there's a farmhand, this um, kind of someone who's in between a boy and a man I feel is his age and he's we're told that you can see him when he's off work leaning against a doorway smoking a cigarette telling jokes to his friends or gazing off into the night so it paints an immediate picture of this character and what he's like and then we're told he's actually always thinking about dancers and how his own personality and his own physical presence his physique is more practical than romantic. So um, we have this distinction between how he feels he's supposed to be and how he naturally is, like what's true to his nature versus what does society expect him to be like. And that's the first complex thing you can say about this poem, the difference between this person's individual nature and then how most of society is. So, um, yeah, it says that music tears an old wound open in his mind, which to me suggests that he had a painful romantic experience before and maybe he's a bit too shy to try again. And um, maybe he wasn't, you know, confident with it or comfortable being romantic in the way that he thinks he's expected to be. Um, so yeah, we're told that he's well suited physically and mentally to farm work but not so well suited to finding love because he can't take part in all of these 
social rituals like the dance that he would be expected to take part in. He has awkward hopes and envious dreams. So awkward and envious, these adjectives you can zoom in on, they suggest that he isn't great at doing it himself, but he's aware that other people are better at, I don't even know what the word is, courtship is the old fashioned word for it, like Victorian times for, yeah, basically like going out, meeting girls and um, maybe finding a girlfriend, that kind of thing. The process of courtship. Um, yeah, so it suggests that some of his instincts or some of his character is like, maybe this is what we should be doing. This is what ex society expects us to be like. And then another part of it is completely happy doing his farm work and being how he is and just accepting that he's not ever going to be, you know, a dancer and a romantic and so on. It's not a part of his personality. So he's possibly jealous. He's very awkward. He's maybe self-conscious. Um, he's an interesting, quite well-rounded character in that way. In the final few lines, we'll kind of reinforce this message that we shouldn't actually pity him. We shouldn't feel sorry for him because even if he, he might not be the most romantic or the most kind of capable of, um, of this courtship, he's very much perfectly suited to the job that he does and he enjoys it and he takes pride in it and he finds it kind of fulfilling. Um, so he... He approaches his work almost as if it's a marriage in himself, like in itself, sorry, as, as if like he loves his work so much that's kind of like a relationship almost. So it depends on whether you agree or disagree. This is why um, I said it's a bit of an odd poem. <laughs> so um, yeah, I, I don't necessarily think, like I'm a massive workaholic, so <laughs> I work a lot and I love working and it's amazing, but I don't think of it as a marriage. Um, I think of it as kind of like creative output is different to a relationship in my head. So if you're similar to me or you even have different ideas, but they're not the same as what Baxter thinks, that's completely fine. You can totally disagree with and critique poems and that actually shows maturity and it shows that you're able to think on a high level. So as long as you understand what the poet means and then you critique that respectfully, um, you're more than welcome to kind of you know, analyse different lines of interpretation here and maybe agree or disagree with those lines of interpretation. So in this case, the the work is presented as if it's a marriage in itself. I personally wouldn't agree with that. Maybe you would, maybe you wouldn't. So I don't think work should be marriage, basically. <laughs> but I think Baxter thinks that that's a good kind of relationship to have with work. So, um, yeah, the speaker then. There's a clear speaker and an addressee. An addressee is someone who's directly spoken to. And the first word is you, you can see. So it starts by addressing the reader directly. So it uses direct address. Even though it starts with you, there's no specific audience. It does seem like it's a general audience. So it's just anyone who's reading this poem in that moment. And then the farmhand or the farm worker is a subject of the poem, but he's not a, a voice in the poem himself. He doesn't have his own voice, which is quite important because as a character, he sort of like finds it difficult to express himself and um, to exactly kind of stay true to his, his voice or his personality. So it kind of mirrors that, the fact that he's just a character and he doesn't have a, a say in the poem. So we, we have a kind of distance perspective. We're removed from the, the main action and we're just observing him. And he feels the same about the dance. So he's watching the action of the dance and watching these um, beautiful girls dancing with confident boys or men. And he can't kind of be part of that. So it kind of places us in the same position as him really, like we're just watching this world, we're not able to interact with it. So it creates empathy and I think it's quite a clever technique that the poets use there um, to show that, you know, to make us kind of understand how he feels as an outsider looking in. Outside is a really key word for this, um, for this poem as well, so use that if you're writing about it, that he's an outsider or we're given an outsider perspective. 
So there's a few important attitudes here. Firstly, I do agree with this actually. <laughs> we should cultivate a loving relationship with our work. So we should do something that we enjoy, something that gives us um, not just money, but gratification. I think that's like an important aim in life for everyone. I would urge all of you watching this now to make sure that whatever career you end up doing, it's something that you really enjoy and you look forward to every day. So he has, um, as a farmhand, despite the fact that it seems like basic work and it's kind of mindless and boring and whatever, he actually has quite a serious approach to it. He takes it seriously. He kind of is quite sensitive and um, feels kind of like at home in that environment, like it suits him. So he appreciates and admires um, his work and in, in turn we should kind of admire him for being um, you know in a good position work-wise so it's sort of like a nice thing that he's suited to this job and we shouldn't let any kind of prejudice get in the way so any judgment of him get in the way like maybe for you personally you think like working on a farm would be beneath you or it wouldn't pay enough or it's not skilled enough, like especially if you're someone who wants to go to university and get a degree and stuff, it wouldn't, to then go work on a farm seems like a bit of a waste of your education, if that makes sense. So we do have these ingrained attitudes that some jobs are maybe superior to others because they're paid more, because they require higher qualifications and so on, but Baxter's trying to let us see the, the beauty and simplicity here, I think. Um, so I quite appreciate that, I agree with him there. He also says a person should be true to their nature. And this is kind of what the farmhand is like. Like in some ways, he's more true to his nature than, um, you know, the people taking part in this dance or playing this game of like, you know, of courtship, this courtship ritual. He's just himself and he's a very kind of rough, salt of the earth type person. He doesn't have any guilt or shame about his job. So he has a kind of strength in his character and a strength to his simplicity. But he does express a bit of sadness and longing for a partner. So we maybe hope that he does actually find someone suitable for him in the end. Maybe someone else who doesn't like dancing and that whole that whole thing. <laughs> um, it's interesting to think of yourself as well. Like, do you, if you're kind of of the age where you're, you're dating people, are you like, you know, the kind of person to just sort of, um, go along with like standard rituals of like meet someone at a dance or meet someone who's like in your friendship circle or that kind of thing or are you kind of a bit weirder and <laughs> less regular and more likely to find someone who's also less regular and more of an outsider it's interesting how um yeah how you fit within that I'm particularly strange I think because I when I was at school I was really outsidery and very shy and not very good at dancing or talking to anyone never mind um yeah finding a boyfriend or anything like that but now and as I got older I actually quite like going out dancing I find it kind of fun not really for the sake of finding a boyfriend because I've been with my partner a long time but just for the actual enjoyment of it so yeah, so you, you do change over time as well. So if you're if you're someone who goes dancing now but you kind of don't want to, feel free to change and vice versa. If you're someone who's a bit outsidery like I was and um wondering about maybe you would like going dancing, maybe you'll you'll like it in the end. It's not really up to me to give you life lessons, but it is up to me to get you to think about how do you personally connect to this poem. So if you're like, why on earth is she going on about this? It's not really because I have good advice, it's more because um, I want you to think about how does this farmhand and his relationship sort of status and how does his life fit with your own, is it similar or different and in what ways is it similar or different and can you connect somehow to this character because the more you can connect to the ideas of a poem the better you can write about it and if you just kind of analyze it from quite a, a removed point of view and you're not really engaging like emotionally or personally with anything you're never going to write a good essay so um yeah so mainly my aim is to get you kind of clicking with this poem and, and writing a good essay rather than giving you life or relationship advice which I would not take from me <laughs> if you were going to get it from someone 
so um, yeah, with that in mind, another point, and again, this is more like a general idea expressed in the poem. I've realised that this kind of now just reads like a list of advice to do with relationships, but that's not what I intended, so I thought I'd hammer that home. Um, this point is that not everyone is born to be a romantic. So again, kind of about being true to your nature, but um, not expect, not having like standard expectations of romanticism, which I think is kind of fair because, you know, not everyone likes um, roses and chocolates and flowers and, um, you know, not everyone wants to kind of either be a working husband or a housewife. There's all different ways to cultivate relationships with partners um, and also choices of not having stable relationships with partners and all of those are completely fine and I think Baxter is trying to kind of make people who feel like perhaps they're not just this standard romantic, you know, fairy tale type, feel comfortable with themselves. And I think that that's quite a nice, strong message in the poem that um, regardless of what your kind of inclinations are, don't feel like you're kind of forcing yourself to being a certain way that is counteractive to your character. So the farmhand is socially awkward and he feels kind of excluded and he's not able to kind of be naturally romantic, but there's still loads that's great about him. For example, the care and attention that he puts into the work, the fact that he's very comfortable in his natural environment and he's really well built for that and his it suits his character. So there's loads that he can get out of life without trying to force himself to change, basically. Another couple of points, um, I've kind of gone over this one a little bit with the loving relationship, but it's a bit more class-based this one, so if you wanted to analyse this on class it's probably worth going into, um, but it's just this idea that there is uh, just kind of un unskilled work or um, work that is low paid doesn't mean that it's not beautiful or there's kind of dignity in that. And actually that is a, an idea that comes across in quite a few different poems in this collection. So um, yeah, think about how that connects to some of the other poems there. So he does what we call lowly work, work that is kind of considered quite low class, I suppose. Um, or an, he's an unskilled labourer. La he does unskilled labour. But it doesn't mean that he's not, um, he's not good at it, it doesn't suit him and so on. We also have this idea that relationships are not the only source of happiness in life. So he has this real pleasure and satisfaction from working on the farm and doing his work. And we can see actually how this relates to Baxter when we do the context later on. And finally, we have that our physical appearance reflects our inner character. And I think this is quite interesting. I quite liked this point, how he uh, deals with it, Baxter, um, because the farmhand's sort of awkward about how he looks, like he's got a sunburnt face or hairy hands, but in a way, the way that he looks suits him too and reflects his work. So your appearance is a little bit adaptable, it's not just like a fixed thing, and depending on what job you do and how your lifestyle is, it's going to change. So in a way, your physical appearance reflects your inner character, and um, I think it's just quite good to be aware of that really because I wasn't really aware of that for years and I thought I couldn't really like change how I looked. I don't even know. <laughs> it's difficult to, to kind of think about it but it, yeah it's like it's kind of like quite a nice freeing idea when you realise this because you're like oh you know I'm a reflection of what I value in my day and, and I'm a reflection of kind of like the work that I do and so on. So for example, I have like dyed hair and a nose ring and so on. Um, and if I was a standard teacher in a standard school, I probably wouldn't be allowed these things. So um, yeah, I make kind of aesthetic choices with my appearance that reflects the job that I do and is suitable given that you don't see my nose all the time. <laughs> and I'm not like a, I'm a tutor as opposed to a standard teacher. So I don't have this like way I should look. Um, yeah, so it reflects my inner character because I, I like having a nose ring. I'm part Indian, so it's part of my um, my heritage and my culture as well. 
I had a friend um, who became a teacher and he's absolutely covered in tattoos, but he had them from his kind of uh, wrist upwards and from his ankle upwards. So as long as he completely covered himself from head to toe, like wore a suit every day, basically, and a shirt and stuff, uh, no one ever knew. <laughs> so when he was at school, he just looked super neat and, and kind of tidy. And then when, because I used to live with him because we, we were good friends, when, um, yeah, when he was at home, he'd just have t-shirts on and he'd be covered in tattoos. And it was really crazy because I felt like he couldn't really be himself and he couldn't really let other people know that, you know, that's how he looked. Um, so yeah, it's interesting. Certain jobs require a certain aesthetic more than others, and certain jobs will kind of adapt you into an aesthetic. So if you're doing a really physical job, you will get physically stronger and you'll build muscle, for example, as the farmhand does. So, um, all sorts of attitudes coming out there. <laughs> Hopefully you find it interesting and not weird. <laughs> or if you find it weird, you still find it interesting and useful. Um, we're going to go into a bit more of the practical side of the language now. So firstly, there's a semantic field of farming. This basically means that there's loads of words to do with farming. So it creates an atmosphere of a farm. It feels like the visual imagery is all connecting to that environment. So it helps us ground the farmhand in his location. There's a couple of similes, but I think the main one that I found interesting was girls drifting like flowers on the dance floor. So in a way, it's kind of beautiful and fragile and delicate, and that's kind of what flowers are. And that's how he perceives the girls. And maybe they have flowing dresses that look like petals or something. So it's sort of like a beautiful image in a way, but it is also... And this is a really good double meaning to get out of this one. It's also a really standard image, like something that is almost cliche. Like you just, you know, if I said, describe a beautiful girl, you might say, like a flower. That's like one of the standard images that comes to mind. So in a way, it shows the lack of romantic language that the farmhand can describe his world in. Like he's not used to coming up with these poetic metaphors that are all romantic and personal about how beautiful these girls are, he can only give like a standard cliched uh, simile there. Use a basic image to describe girls. So it's very generic and very general and not personal or specific. And that, um, that shows his lack of connection to that romantic world or that world of courtship. Courtship, in case you're wondering how to use that word, I'm gonna just write it here. Um, it's actually a theme as well, so I'm going to copy it into the themes down here so that you can see it. But yeah, courtship, it just means, again, that whole ritual of, um, um, you know, meeting people that you might date and then finding a partner in life and, and so on. This one as well, I think, has a double kind of meaning or double possible interpretation to it. Crop slow glow. <laughs> Wow, crap slow growing is his mind. Difficult to say aloud. So basically, um, you could interpret it quite negatively, like he's simplistic and he's, um, his mind isn't very quick to catch on or that kind of thing. So you could see it as a sort of negative. Or it could just suggest that he's a late developer and he's immature. So this thing that I was saying, the beginning of the lesson where he's like maybe physically very mature looking but actually psychologically still quite young in his mind like he's not that experienced with um all this kind of adult stuff so i sort of interpret it as the latter but um yeah it's good to always get double meanings out of things when you can because that's that's like a high level thing to do in your essays on poetry and on any literature so i thought i'd give you that double meaning there um, and finally, we have alliteration here, listening like a lover to the song. Again, quite standard as a simile, using like there. But the L sound creates a kind of long, drawn out, extended kind of sound throughout that image. Maybe suggesting longing or lingering on the sound of the engine. So he's listening to the sound of the tractor engine 
um, like a lover as if he was, again, this idea of being married to his job or being, um, you know, in love almost with what he's, what he's doing, his, his life's work. So metaphorically, um, the song is the noise of the tractor, but it's kind of like a song that he sings because it's such a nice, to the farmhand, it's such a nice sound that it's almost musical. It's like maybe he doesn't quite understand the normal music and dance rituals of, um, you know, of normal teenagers his age, but he appreciates beauty and he appreciates, um, you know, aesthetics, like things that can seem or be uh, beautiful, especially in his work. Hopefully that made sense. <laughs> At the end I was like, am I just rambling or am I actually making a point here? Sometimes that happens, so I apologise if if you notice that. <laughs> You're like, what? Um, yeah, so structure points then. It's a single stanza, so it's one long continuous idea. I think because it's a vignette of the farm boy. I'm going to write this word in here because um, a vignette is a nice way to describe it that I should have really typed it earlier, but I didn't. So vignettes are like um, like a little portrait or a little picture of, of something. A vignette is kind of, you probably you maybe know it from phone filters, like if you take a, um, a picture on your phone you can put a vignette and it just kind of like gives you a little sort of frame I suppose around a subject. Um, so yeah, that's maybe where you know this word vignette from. But I think the single stanza gives us a kind of like framed picture almost of this of this boy. There's quite a lot of enjambement. The most uh, kind of powerful one I thought was where it says his eyes turn and then there's a line break and it says to the dance floor. So as his eyes turn and they skip, the line also skips so it kind of emphasizes that, that shift in focus. And in terms of focal shifts generally there's quite a few different shifts in focus so make sure that you're sensitive to those and you you can kind of pick up where those are happening. They're not always that obvious, so I have written them out here if you're if you're struggling with that one. But a focal shift is a really good thing to analyze in, um, you know, as a structure form point, so it's worth spending your time getting used to that. So finally then, we just got a little bit of um, context and themes to finish off. Um, the main things about context, firstly it's pastoral. If you learn about the pastoral genre, it actually connects quite well to several different poems in this collection. So I would recommend just kind of maybe spending like half an hour just reading about pastoral and what it is so that you get used to it. I've kind of given you a small summary here. So basically poetry that, ex or any kind of literature that explores nature and kind of like the beauty and simplicity of the countryside. So people who have quite simple lives and they work, um, you know, on a farm or as a shepherd or as a milkmaid or that kind of thing. So pastoral poetry is quite an old traditional type of poetry that always kind of champions the beauty and simplicity of the countryside rather than, uh, you know, how kind of crazy busy cities are or <laughs> that kind of thing. So it's about how idyllic country life can be. So in a way you can see that with the farmhand because he has this kind of like perfect idyllic life where he's really um, really happy working with the land and working and surrounded by nature. But it's also kind of contradicting itself a bit and a bit more balanced because he's not so happy about the whole like, you know, finding a partner in life and um, partaking in social rituals type aspect of, of his life. So some things are very pastoral, but some things are actually kind of like critiquing the pastoral or going a bit beyond the pastoral as well. Yeah, and then I, I did say I'd give you a little bit on Baxter himself. He's a very, like, in the, in contra, I don't know how to explain this. Um, he's quite a controversial poet. Not really. I don't know what the word is. Some people think he's he does a lot of good um, for literature and some people really don't like him so if you read um, more about him you might come up against things that you don't like. I'm sort of in the middle. I I wouldn't mind 
uh, I wouldn't mind his kind of character and his personality so much if his poetry was like mind-blowingly amazing but I find his poetry is kind of like okay it's not the worst poems by a long way but it's not the best either it's pretty good for studying at GCSE because it's deep enough that you can write something complex on it without it being too boring um, or difficult and so on. So it's, it's a good balance, but yeah, he's not my best. But he had um, quite a difficult life and he had some quite complex kind of changes in his life. So he had alcoholism, uh, meaning he was an alcoholic, he drank too much. He died really young, age 46. Um, he had quite a difficult marriage and relationship with his family. I think he preferred work to family life and work to being a father, which is, you know, some people sort of have children and then realise that about themselves and it's kind of tragic when that happens, but not everyone, um, you know, intends to end up that way. So he might have been the kind of person who didn't intend to end up as he did. Um, and he does write some very interesting, quite important socio-political poetry sometimes and things that help us think a bit deeper about our society and how it works, as you can see he does here. So there's some good and some not so good about Baxter, and if you read more about him, you might come across that, so I thought I'd mention it for you here. <laughs> yeah, the main thing I would disagree with is the um, his, his uh, attitude to relationships versus his attitude to uh, work. Um, and I think you can suggest, but definitely don't, say this for sure that maybe um you know this farmhand that he's thinking of is actually a younger version of himself because he spent quite a few years working on farms in New Zealand I think I can't quite remember from when I was reading about it now but I think he maybe um had to drop out of uni or studying at some point and then he just took on kind of casual labor because of his um his dropping out I think again due to the alcoholism so yeah it maybe is talking about his own youth and his own um his own kind of uh how he felt at that time and how it was difficult for him to form relationships or whatever so it might be about that it might also just be people that he met while he was working on farms so it's important to say that he knows firsthand what, you know, what these types of people are like and um, especially in New Zealand where he lived. And also to suggest but not definitely say that maybe this is a version of himself that he's exploring. So finally, we've got some um, themes. I'll just kind of chuck them all onto the same page for you. So with these themes, I want you to go back into the poem and basically just like work out what the message is about each theme. So what is the final statement on love and relationships or what is the final statement on work? And that will just kind of help solidify all of the ideas that we've practiced today and help you kind of just get it all really stuck in your head. So hopefully you enjoyed this lesson and you didn't mind my crazy rambling where it seemed like I was just giving you advice for life at one point. I was like, wow. I didn't mean to <laughs> didn't mean to just like preach to you about how to be. Um, but yeah, hopefully that was useful for you and you're feeling a lot more confident on this poem. You feel like you could write a good, solid, complex essay on this poem and yeah, you feel satisfied. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for listening and I'm sure I'll see you guys soon.